I, when I was watching the movie, I remembered I went to eat dinner at Lorenzo's house at one point. This is how, I, like, this is so fucked up, man. Like, I really fucked up my future by not taking it seriously. What's up, folks? It's Dr. Remy LeBeau, and I'm coming at you once again from the X Lair to provide you my very deep and insightful thoughts on a documentary that I just watched, which I think most of you would be interested in, called The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened? Stay tuned for my thoughts. So general thoughts, I really like this documentary. It's a documentary that basically tells the story of what could have been in terms of this Superman film that was being developed in the 90s by Tim Burton, partly by Kevin Smith, and this very interesting character named John Peters, who together got the film three weeks close to starting production, and yet at the very last moment, uh, shit went awry and the film did not get made. So my overall thoughts on this documentary, I think it was well made. I think that the story that it told was captivating for someone like myself, who John Schnepp, the writer-director, would call a sweaty nerd. And actually, I am a bit sweaty right now, so, and I am very nerdy. This is a very nerdy video, so it's a very apropos title. Um, the uh, film is for this sort of niche audience. Uh, I think other people might find it entertaining, but really it's for the fans of comic book films, of comic book heroes, of comic books in general, who either were aware or were not aware of the fact that this film was potentially almost on the verge of being made in the 90s. Today was the, the third of a three-night premiere series here in Los Angeles. All three nights were at the Egyptian Theater here in Hollywood. Uh, each night there was like a, a Q&A afterwards. And tonight, this final night, Saturday night, uh, Kevin Smith was actually there. So it was really cool to have Kevin Smith actually be present and have John Schnepp and him sort of interacting in front of the crowd and you know, kind of going into a little bit more detail on what what went on behind the scenes on both the documentary as well as in the actual pro process that the film is documenting of trying to make this Superman movie that never that was never made. Another really cool aspect of this film is that John Schnepp did crowdfunding in order to get the film made and so there's that very sort of um, communal nature to this film where so many individuals put they're, you know, they're just small uh, amounts of money into the film. I'm one of them, I gave like 20 bucks or something. He was able to simply tell a story that was interesting and tell it in the way that he wanted to tell it. And that's what's most important. And it turned out to be really good. One of the most interesting aspects of this film was that Nicolas Cage was gonna play Superman. And basically the film was going to be an adaptation of the famous Dan Jurgens' Death of Superman storyline that occurred in the 90s, which became this very uh, drawn out, intricate process, two year process that the film documents in various sort of testimonials by key figures and, uh, and, and does a really great job of all of that. A few key figures, which are basically this producer named John Peters who owned the rights, who owns the rights to Superman, and uh, basically producing the Superman films, uh, uh, as well as Kevin Smith, who you all know is like writer director. He actually wrote a script for this film, and um, and of course we have uh, Tim Burton who came in to direct the film, and then a few other writers and and some other figures. Uh, the film does a great job of kind of just telling us exactly what went on during that time period, why this film never got made, and sort of detailing how far into the pre-production process the film got. But I'm not gonna get into the details of that in this review. I'm not gonna spoil the details. 
So the film has a really nice like backbone. I, I feel like the the backbone to the film was the Kevin Smith interview. It, um, so I, I'm sure some of you have seen this like YouTube video where Kevin Smith is talking, I don't know, maybe in the early 2000s or something about this whole experience that he had with Superman Lives. And, and what this film does really nicely is kind of take that story, present it in a way that is that is better than VHS quality, whatever that quality is of that YouTube video that's online, and kind of you know use that as somewhat of a backbone to the entire film, which is really nice because like I, I'm sure some of you have watched this video, and it seems like it, it is a popular video online, and obviously a lot of people in this sort of sweaty nerd community know about this story that Kevin Smith has told about his interactions with the producer, what the producer was wanting him to do, sort of the silly aspect of a lot of the things that he was being asked to do. And uh, what's great about the film and the fact that it, it does use it as a backbone is that it kind of like flushes the story out. Like it brings in this producer, John Peters, who turns out to be the star of the film. Um, Kevin Smith is sort of like the supporting star, but this John Peters character is a very interesting character because the story that Kevin Smith told was very one-sided and it could easily have painted a, a, a picture of this guy as being somewhat biased, you know, to Kevin Smith's per perspective. What the film does by having this actual character in the film and having John Schnapp interview him is actually reveal him to be very similar to what Kevin Smith uh, sort of presented him as. You know, within the context of this whole production process and the fact that he owns the film rights, he is sort of a comical figure because some of the aspects of the story that Kevin Smith has told are funny, very funny, and there's no other way to characterize them. The story itself is entertaining, the way the film structure is entertaining, the way uh, some of the um, animation and sort of like the recreations of things that never happened are presented are and very entertaining. I think all of that really enriches the film and makes it into something that's substantial and interesting to watch. And without this interview with this John Peters character, it would have been a good film, I'm sure. But this John Peters character like really kind of injected something else into it and made it into um, something I think a lot more special than I, I would have expected from it and, and I'm really happy about that and what's really interesting about that and something that was revealed in the Q&A afterwards is that they were basically done with the film like three or four weeks before it, it premiered this last weekend and finally after a long process of trying to get this John Peter uh, character, John Peter's character into the film were able to get gain access to him and he granted the interview and so they were able to you know interview him but then of course because of that they had to sort of dismantle them their entire film and kind of put it back together again with John Peters in it which I'm really glad they took the time to do because once again I feel like that made a huge difference in terms of elevating its entertainment quality so in closing, I want to say that I highly recommend this film. It's coming out in the middle of July on Blu-ray. I suggest you guys go out and buy it. It's not going to be that expensive and it's going to be worth your money. If you are a comic book fan, I think you'll enjoy it. And there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that's going to be on the Blu-ray apparently. Um, long, long interviews, uh, little featurettes, etc. that I think would, will make it, uh, will make it uh, worth buying. So just go out and buy it. Uh, as a film, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. A documentary in and of itself, if, it, if it's done well, is usually going to be a good film. And, and this happened to have been done well. Well, thank you for checking out my video. Thanks for checking out my YouTube channel, Dr. Remy LeBeau's x -Lair. If you haven't already subscribed, you have the opportunity to do so. I hope all of you are doing well. And as always, I'd like to remind you that if you haven't already, you should put an X in that box because ain't nobody checking me, folks. Ain't nobody checking me. Take care. Bye-bye.